Hello, Knights of the Roll Table. This is Chris, your Dungeon Master for Season 2. Well, it's pretty much over. Uh, this is the wrap-up bonus episode for Season 2. So if you're listening to us for the first time, stop, stop! You can go back to the first episode of Season 2 or just the first episode of Season 1 if you want to start there. But either one, it's a good place to start. This one contains a lot of spoilers, so official spoiler warning just a reminder and a request that if you like what we're doing if you like knights of the roll table and you want to support us uh, please leave a five-star review on itunes or spotify or whatever service that you're listening to uh, we would really appreciate it it helps the mysterious algorithm that's out there that lets us get listed and helps more people find out about the show we really appreciate your guys' support and any kind words you want to leave, uh, we will read out reviews during announcements. Zach is going to be taking over as DM again for Season 3. Next week on Tuesday, we are going to be releasing a How to Have a Session Zero episode and have a Session Zero episode for Season 3. So that will be kind of fun. And then the following week, we will be posting our first episode of Season 3. If you want to reach us on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at Rolled Table. That's at Rolled Table, or you can use the hashtag Rolled Table and let us know what you think about the show. Uh, ask us any D&D questions that you want to ask us. Uh, we are always available for a chat. You can see original art for all of the Season 2 characters and Season 1 and photos of us sitting around the table having a goofball time. Uh, on our Instagram as well, as well as some how-to D&D tips. Thank you guys so much again for listening. I had a blast DMing. This was uh, very educational as well as a whole lot of fun, and I can't wait to get back to playing again. So thanks. Enjoy the bonus episode. <laughs> Welcome to Knights of the Roll Table, the season two wrap-up episode. Yay! Yay! We did it! We did Huzzah. it! And Jeff's you here. all survived. Well, of course Jeff's here. Jeff was part of season two. Mm. Uh, well, let's go around the table, actually, and we'll have everybody say who you are and uh, the character that you played this season, just to kind of put things into perspective of who's here. So, I'm Chris Daly, and I am the DM for season two. I'm Zach Stones, and I was the Jarek Dark Harbor of Season 2. I'm Matt Messerman. I played Salius throughout Season 2. I'm Jen Stop Crespo, and I played Sarsa. Jeff Frank, I was Big Bart and Massimo. <laughs> and my name is Weston, and I played Coach. Fantastic. Uh, well, we, uh, we're still in the midst of editing the finale, but um, when this comes out, that will have already been released, so... You guys haven't haven't heard the the finale, but you some. I mean, Jeff hasn't heard it, but I have uh, no I idea what's going to happen. The rest of you, you might have remembered that. And we're recording this a couple weeks after we recorded the finale, so we'll be kind of reliving some moments and talking about um, highlights and things. So I want to open it up just uh, to a discussion of what you guys think. But um, we'll start with just like favorite moments. Um, any favorite moments that you guys had from the season? And um, favorite things that you guys like that um, other characters did. I loved the Jarek Eagle moment. Like <laughs> I've never, I've never felt so much joy by proxy as I did in that moment of like him getting to ride the freaking eagle. Like it was like, yes, live your truth. <laughs> that was pretty rad. I, I enjoyed was, that too. That was a fun thing that you know because you wanted it and wanted it, and mm -hmm. you're like, nope, nope. No. It, it, it was like, and then. But in episode three, I was like, oh, yeah, that's going to come back. I can mm -hmm. save that. I can make that work somehow. And having it, you know, retroactively be like, yeah, he had a ring on and it controls the metal bird. And that seemed, just seemed right. Yeah, that's something I definitely appreciated. Lots of moments like that where you took you took something that we had mentioned as a thing and made it 
important later. Like Jarek got dark vision from his snake thing and <laughs> other stuff like that it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think he uh, he threw in the spiders because I made an offhand remark about not liking spiders. Mm-hmm. Are we allowed to talk about the snafu that occurred with that episode? Yeah, sure. So with that episode, I mean, yeah, because I think we even mentioned it. Wait, no. Well, we didn't say which episode it was on social media. At one point we shared like, wow, in recording last night, we recorded an awesome episode. Oh, yeah. And then we re-recorded it because we were not recording the last hour. And I think it's definitely like the way it comes out. I think it's definitely like I didn't really notice in like re-listening to it. So I think like. We can go on to talk about that in this episode, but first I want to give people an opportunity to like think and maybe even listen back and try to guess what part of what episode was redone because I'm certainly proud of how we redid it. And we lost, I think we lost some great moments, but we also added some great moments. And I, this is definitely a moment where I think we as a cast came together and did something really cool. Made and it, it was, made it work. It was late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was really late. <laughs> it was so late. We finished at like 1230. I'm still tired from that. (laughs) (laughs) Recovering. Hello, boys and girls. This is the Magical Editing Fairy. This is your chance to pause the podcast and think to yourselves about which episode in season two we had to record the second half of twice. That's right. One of the episodes we actually did a second time. It was an entire hour that we had to repeat, but it was a little different. You'll find out in three, two, one. I really oh, and Coach, oh my gosh, uh, Coach's uh, Coach and Eating Water <laughs> oh <my laughs> to gosh, Revive yes. was an awesome addition. Hydration is very important. Gosh. Yeah. Save, could save your life. I, 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 as we were doing that, and when Coach was dead, I, I, I uh, unconscious or dead, dead, I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen, and I just sort of, I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> what would bring him back? You know? Well, I will say, I mean, even though we were recording it a second time, like because we had changed things, and even that moment that Chris included of like Coach not coming back. It really did feel like even though we had run through it before and we kind of, I think, had an idea in our heads of kind of how things were going to wind up, like, it did feel like there were still some stakes there. And Mm -hmm. uh, I would say this whole season, like, this whole season to me felt like we had some legitimate stakes in place and, and... I don't think I felt quite as as safe, uh, oh. which, which was exciting. I mean, I literally almost was very close to dying, <laughs> yeah. which that's a first for me. Yeah, we almost lost Coach. We almost lost you, Jabin. You were, I think, you were one death save away. Or? I was one. I had a role. Yeah. That uh, had that failed, I Sarsa would be uh, no more. Yeah. So thank you, Mark, for my um, birthday <laughs> that was a, dice. That's a lucky die. Because those. Uh, allowed her to stick around and and we did lose cobbles we did lose cobbles uh, right. well yeah, let's talk about that so kind of kicking off the season um and we can always come back to favorite moments but so kicking off the season with a, a major or kind of a, a side character death this is not something that the audience knew but we kind of were familiar with that character uh from a previous uh adventure that we had done you know it's kind of establishing even then like these characters knew this other npc and then they really cared about him, and then except for Coach, and then uh, and and then he gets killed in, in combat, sort of defending them. What I was trying to do is is allowing you guys to be like, oh, now we're invested, you know. Now now we have some sort of like either reason for revenge, or you know, reason to figure out what's going on, or who this guy is, or you know, kind of this is hopefully a hook that would bring you guys into it. But what do you guys think? Well, he was my character. Yes. <laughs> and also he was, was your character. So it, actual character. It, it, it wasn't just some like NPC. Like Cobbles was the character I created yeah. when I first joined this group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we were doing a text campaign. And I, I created Cobbles. And then you did. Chris just like murdered him in front of me. <laughs> Don't you forget and that. I was like, yeah. wait, that's not... I've never... like None of my characters have ever died before let alone it being a character that I created, then somebody else kills it. Like, it's really interesting uh, being being put in that scenario where I was like, no, but he's... Yeah. But I'm not controlling... That's not... 
Yeah. It was I, wild. I forgot. That's how you got brought into this group, mm-hmm. really, was yeah. as cobbles. As cobbles. Wow. But Coach didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, no. I'm sorry. Coach, no. coach just wanted to, uh, coach just wanted to uh, recruit him. <laughs> sure, sure. Coach wanted him working in his mind. I'm sorry if that was that was rough. Oh no, it was it was it was, it was great. It it definitely started the season off with higher stakes though. Like we all like, oh okay. It's I like the idea of starting with a siege on the on the town, whether it was successful or not, because it could have easily gone wrong <laughs> with on on the villains' part. Well, I mean, yeah, the 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 town didn't really do so great. Yeah. So. What what was the uh what was the best the heroes could have done in that situation? Any better than we <laughs> we rolled because we rolled horribly that entire you know skill challenge. You, you failed the skill challenge by one or two things, but but uh, I think well the burning of the city was definitely Silas's fault. <laughs> that was not that was not in the cards originally. I was like, okay, well, great, we'll just add fire to the mix. <laughs> but that's fine. It was that was sort of like the the kerfuffle of of the which was great. I thought it was good. It was very candy. Silius. It was like, oh, uh oh, <laughs> I'd like to do this chain of fire, and it just starts lighting a bunch of businesses on fire. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe they they could have probably saved more people. But I mean, ultimately, it would just I just was, you know, there's more and more of these twig blights, and and uh, to the point where. It's such a low level. It's like a CR one fourth and one half for the needle needle blights uh, enemy that you know. But if there's three hundred of them, <laughs> mm-hmm. then that could be a problem. It's that's a problem. And, and, and plus, was. and plus this uh, you know big armored construct guy and flying snakes and flying snakes and yeah and All cultists. All manner of nightmare fuel and cultists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. cultists uh, ripping a bag of holding and. All these things popping out. I think my uh, my favorite NPC of the season was the the orc artist that paints the mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. the, 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 the names on the type on the side of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he came in, I was like, "Yeah, D and D is great. <laughs> this is fantastic." Yeah, oh, he was so the good. The unnamed artist. Oh uh, no, my favorite was the Ericoa. Uh, Eric Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Kokra, hello, sorry. darling. <laughs> um, yeah, she was uh, she was a force of nature. And I liked Coach's uh, internal the Kia, the Kia aw- Yeah, Coach's little internal awakening <laughs> <laughs> was definitely my favorite, my favorite D and D romance of all time. And I think needs to show up uh, in either some some fanfic or the <laughs> EU, the Knights of the Rolled Table EU that gets developed at some point. Yeah. Okay. Send us pictures. <laughs> Draw them, send them, send them to Jen. You I don't can just create your own Deviant Art account, <laughs> and like just all share it on ArtStation. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, NPCs. Did anybody else have a favorite NPC? I was a big fan of Bartleby myself. Bartleby had some ups and downs with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> At first, you didn't trust him, and then he was very handy, and then he was. And we still didn't trust him. Like... Bartleby was originally going to be the the big bad of the <gasps> season. Really. In, in, in my original kind of notes, I was like, wouldn't it be funny, you know, if this little guy... But but he basically, like, created an army he couldn't control. Um, but then other... I was like, no, I, I kind of like him, you know, as I was making him. And, <laughs> and uh, I just liked the idea of maybe he got corrupted into something with the promise of... He was legitimately trying to save his town with the promise of this other person saying, hey, I can make this work. and And then... You know, it, things got out of control, uh, and then he tried to stop it. But you know, she has mind control powers, so he couldn't. As we know, yeah. So it was kind of an unwitting like henchman of the main villain, but he was not uh, willingly trying to do bad things. Oh, uh, can we talk about what's his name? Uh, Ramsby Gord. Oh, go- oh, go- 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 Ramsey. Ramsey. How do you forget that name? Yeah. Forget, you so might forget good. that name, but you're never gonna forget that creme brulee. No way! I will yeah, never you guys let, will that not let that forget. go. Hey, when you cook with one rocks, crit fail. <laughs> Coach well, no. has like a minus one to survival. Well, so oh. I, like the, 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 I had the whole like you know idea of like okay, well he's he wants to fight, and the 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 skill challenge whether you won or not was 
was we'll see like okay we'll see and then but it was actually sarsa bringing him back to life because if you if he if you didn't do that then you would have had to do something about 40 angry bugbears that you know you just killed the boss uh in this temple well, so then, that would thank have been you jen hey y'all the networking is very important clearly <laughs> And it, and it was great because they ended up uh, coming back and being the cavalry. Yeah. Oh, my the God. Corgi. <laughs> the corgis. Oh, the horse corgis. Oh. That, yes. I mean, obviously for us it was a visual moment, but just like the introduction of For that, all of you it should be a visual moment. Oh, if, you if you have you not seen the picture, the collage of the horse corgis with Godron Ram's head I need and it on a fire. Yeah. Christmas uh, is coming. Go to Instagram right now at Roll Table <laughs> and look at that because it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you listen to that episode, you can hear all of our reactions. Oh, We're all just like squeeing, losing oh, so <laughs> our minds. Yeah, that was that was such a wonderful moment, and I'm glad that you you literally copied, like, cut and pasted uh, actual corgi heads. I mean, I, you're an incredible <laughs> artist. I know you could have done it by hand, but the uh, the early 2000s internet era yeah. photoshopping of that was like it, it was a very uh, Terry Gilliam moment. For yes, us. yeah. yeah. It, move head here yeah no that that checked a lot of boxes for me more of that <laughs> season three zach take notes well yeah. we have a, a twitter question um oh. at primer john asks what's the source and inspiration of all the accents that the cast uses so where did you guys get your accents and voices from for your characters well i can talk about mine uh so for salius i just wanted him to be uh, i didn't want him to sound like me and i wanted him to be a I want him to sound old, even though he's not that old, uh, as he will remind anybody. So I, he ended up slightly um, like the stay a while and listen guy from Diablo, <laughs> whose name I'm blanking on. And I just kind of <laughs> backed off the Sean Connery-ness of that accent until Did I you? got Silius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you? I think, I think so. Sean Connery had more he of didn't a... He didn't have the shush as much. Stay yeah. a while and listen to stay a while and listen. You know, it's a little yeah. different. Yeah. And then it just and then the, the random spell thing just sort of happened with him. Uh, for me, for Sarsa, uh, as some of you guys probably already know, I'm a big fan of clerics, and but one of my biggest gripes is that they get treated as these heel bots, which is such an underutilization of the class. Um, so I just wanted to do this character that was like fed up with being asked to like heal everybody and save their butts, and you know, but I have all these other skills, and so that kind of grew into this just disgruntled person and. I was like, well, you know, I, I when we initially played this campaign, she was not as PG as we have made all of these characters in, in, <laughs> in me adapting this to the podcast. So I was like, well, she's going to curse like a sailor. She's going to be a sailor. And, uh, you know, if you're going to do a sailor, I, it kind of went like Johnny Depp piratey, a little bit of Irish brogue in there. <laughs> and you you had last year went to Ireland. Did that I, in in, influence? Yeah. A little bit of it. I will not insult the Irish by saying that I based that accent on an actual Irish accent. Uh, I think it helped, though. It did. It did. did definitely helped. Um, you know, anytime you travel, that's research, baby. So, uh, yeah. I, but, you know, it's mostly just me in my car just talking to myself. I was an only child, so uh, I'm really used to entertaining myself. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Speaking of the impact of Jen's trip to Ireland on the podcast, we we recorded episodes 10, 9 and 10 of season one, uh, like the night after she and Mark got home. So oh, she was yeah. super jet lagged oh, yeah. and worn out. And oh. so we recorded, we actually recorded 10 first, which was the great XX escape from oh, the Feywild. Yeah. Yeah. That went pretty fine. And then the next one was... That was the one where you brought Silius in. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, that was Wandering Sorcerer. So we recorded that after, where Silius comes in. You can hear me in. yawning in that one, can't you? Yes. <laughs> I cut out a fair amount of like yawns and falling aparts, too. But I think <laughs> something that dramatically impacted the like present and future of the, of the podcast out of that was like that episode ends with going back to the Feywild and making the deal with uh, uh, Aranye with the, like, well, uh, I forget what the, what the deal was basically, like, as long as I'm alive, I get to keep the staff. And she's like, yes. <laughs> and that <laughs> yeah. was a very organic, like, Jen is exhausted. Yep. Jen is jet lagged. Jen's not really thinking of the implications. No. And that is just in there. <laughs> and to be fair, though, like, I think Maya had been through so much with that. I mean, we had kind of justified it. ended it like, up working great. <laughs> that's huge. Well. And that's going to have implications, you guys. Teasers. Spoilers. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! 
Anyway, accents. <laughs> you know, I got I got a few more. So, uh, Zach, so Zach, how did you come up with the accent for Jarek Dark? My Jarek cunning Jarek Dark Harbor accent. I mean, it's it doesn't really have an accent. <laughs> My goal was just a little bit grizzly or a little bit down here, but I don't always keep that in the in the heat of things. And so, I really, after DMing and doing a lot of voices, like kind of want to just be able to talk and <laughs> talk and think and hang That's in fair. there. So I didn't do too much and. Hopefully that's fine. Where's Coach come from? I can't really talk about mine for fear of copyright infringement. Oh, so, he's cool. He's a cool guy. <laughs> come on, come on, Patrick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I, 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 I just always have done that that voice. Um, you know that. Yeah, I, uh, down here and um, in, and I've I've always liked that characterization and kind of like this loving dumb guy. You know, just like you just want to like hug him and also slap him when he says something dumb like i i've, I've just always liked that voice mm -hmm. so that's something that i've worked on for years and I, now it's just like it I, I could just it just comes out of me without even thinking about it i do that voice because of you now <laughs> all the time all the time let it spread yes. every time i like hydration is very important mm -hmm. yeah. that is just that's in my vernacular now <laughs> and it, it's always said with that voice too yeah, hydration is very important. Yeah, that and cool magic orb. Cool magic orb. Yeah, I wrote down a couple of things for NPCs. Like, uh, Nuzir was inspired by Jeremy Irons as Star. Nice. Uh, oh. But obviously, changed a little bit. He was, you know, started out very, you know, over articulating everything, and uh, and then Kishara was kind of inspired by a, an evil Helen Mirren. Like, I was, I, I wrote down, <laughs> I, I wrote down a young evil Helen Mirren. Um, not like like hot old e e Helen Helen Mirren, <laughs> but but you know younger Helen Mirren. Uh, and then uh, Cole was like a Jason Statham ah. kind of, but not inspired. And then uh, Bartleby nice. was sort of like a a, a young Joe Pesci. Or <laughs> 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 was, you know, his Joe Pesci's kind of up here, but you know the, the Bartleby. I just wanted him to be a little bit more down there, like a smaller guy. <laughs> oh, you, you think my eagle is funny? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't a, a mean guy, you know. But it was just like that was one of many things that was super impressive. Just like Chris's ability to yeah. skip between accents, even when like multiple characters are in the room. There's various moments where Chris would dive in with like the wrong accent. Yeah. I don't know if any of those are still in there with yeah, him being like, wait a minute, wrong accent. I'm not going to point him out. But like, I think the fact that you like labeled them, I mean, the question kind of like, of, of like, where did the accents come from? I think that's a good, I imagine like that's how Chris is able to do Chris that. Chris is a walking he's, Rolodex. Of well, he like really like has a very clear name. image in his mind of like, this is this character and yeah. that's how you anchor it without getting like mixed up. And Jabin was. David Tennant, Doctor Who. Yes, because <laughs> every once he goes, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's sort of he's higher in the, you know, it's, it's kind of a Scottish English accent, and so I'm inspired that. by that. Yeah, it was nice having you uh, play play. Uh, yeah, we, I'm, so glad, I'm so glad. I'm so glad we got to save him because that would have broken me. If that was definitely a character Oof. I felt like Chris really wanted to kill. Yeah, <laughs> like, man, yeah. <laughs> he's trying. I'm trying to murder him over and over again. <laughs> yeah, you like. Put him on the Crystal Council just in time for <laughs> to be assassinated. Get slaughtered. I was like, what? Yeah. It wasn't uh, my was intent great. to kill Jabin, but it was also like, well, he's there, and that's what the villain would do, and so that that's what happened. Oh, of course. Um, I mean, he could have not been there. He could have been saved. He could have been, you know, whatever. And the, the a coach, I, I told Weston this, but Coach Rolling, uh, you know, he's not a healer, and he was in the room, and Weston rolled a twenty. A nat twenty on a medicine check, mm -hmm. which is what brought him back from death. Mm -hmm. So if he hadn't rolled a twenty, he would be dead. Uh, that, that's 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 one. That's another one of those like one die away from dying. Huh. Take that, fates. Um, yeah, definitely really quick, one of oh, my my favorite parts of the whole season was the like triangle between coach and salius and javen's like, jealous of coach and he has no idea you guys got so much mileage out of that and so much fun at so many points yeah, really cool. writing in on coach to save javen and just so many moments and coach had no clue yeah that was and i think that was the charm of it all is yeah. that coach didn't realize 
what was going on. If you want to add that to the fan art. <laughs> Send to uh, Jen at... Can I yeah, can yeah. I do a reverse Patreon? Where, like... <laughs> you pay them for... Do, do whatever you want. <laughs> I think it's just called being a client. (laughs) Yeah, you just talk to me after this. I don't know how money works, you guys. (laughs) Well, you give it all to me, and good things happen. uh, If if we ever earn money from the podcast, it's going to go right back out the door (laughs) to Jen (laughs) buying fan (laughs) art. (laughs) From me. (laughs) Chris is living up on the mansion on the hill. Yeah. Putting Chris's kids through college. <laughs> so uh, we introduced a couple new knights of the realm in this season. Um, besides uh, Coach being a knight, uh, we learned uh, about um, a few people on the Crystal Council later in the season. Um, but earlier, I think the first one that was revealed was um, Callum. Was Callum, mm-hmm. and that was a cool moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the dates. I think was, oh, yeah. was yeah. one of my favorite episodes to do yes. because it was it was jumping around. It was like literally yeah. splitting everybody into single pairings, yeah. and that was a fun like little stupid like friends episode. Like, wait, let's meet later. Late, let's meet later. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's whatever. And then, but then doing the dates was really fun because we we came back to it. You know, handled after. really well, and that's not edited together. Chris did a really good job just jumping at the right moments between those. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, Callum, and then later I think it was Massimo and Ramara. Mm-hmm. Uh, which shout out to Emily who couldn't make it tonight, but uh, she did a fantastic job. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Uh, and I think we're all terrified of uh, mystics. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Never like, again. I, it's not Ooh. just mystics. It's Emily as a mystic <laughs> because like she is ice cold when she delivers those things, yeah. and I'm like, oh, like you She's would like, do um, it. I'd like to uh, uh, try. Um, Mind melt. <laughs> <laughs> Neuron shadow. <Yeah. laughs> She's the Psychic perfect avalanche. She was the perfect person for an overpowered character yeah. because she never plays anything like an overpowered character. Yeah. And it was very much like we we like made the character and mm. like talked about it and then we would read she would be like, What does this like mean? And we would read the, the description and be like you're basically a god. Like <laughs> you're out of control. I just want you to know that yeah. you're you're out of control. We were going for a very Jean Grey. I think yes, that's what she yeah. said she yeah. wanted to be like out of control, mm-hmm. sort of not not quite on revenge bender, but but you know. There well, was and some then Massimo, that... like being the like going from Bart to Massimo. That was great. Bart Jeff. the Bard into Massimo, and what a wonderful foil for her, who like is this OP character, and then when you finally become Massimo again, like he's a he's a jerk and you're like how is he the hero when she's this amazing but you realize like oh oh, that's the patriarchy baby (laughs) (laughs) well one of the one of the themes and i kind of wanted to see what you guys thought what what the themes were but one of the themes that massimo kind of tied into was the idea of the heroes that are not who you believe they are you know the heroes can fail uh heroes can villains heroes can uh you know just ultimately disappoint you well, voop to do voop to do yeah being another one yeah well, we had nuzir who seemed like he was going to be sort of a villainous person turn out to be good when kishara exactly the oh, opposite God. yeah voop to do being gastorak was not an original plan by the way that, oh, that no. i, I oh. came up with that like the day before Oh. It was like I, I had this whole yeah it's a mind flare you guys are gonna find a mind flare like once I knew he was down there and that's that's what because of Massimo's backstory, mm-hmm. but Voop to do being Gus Thorak I was like oh. <laughs> it's like I forget what I was doing I was Genius. just like that's it that's what's that's what's gonna happen you're it's like just, brushing your teeth I was and you're like, like <laughs> I was like why would they pen. go down there and because like they they're gonna go down there and like what. What, what, why would they have the spiral? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that was such a cool moment. It was really neat. Yeah. That was fun. But what, what other themes did you guys get out of the, the season? If season one was kind of like finding, you know, being a hero and coming together and defending the realm and, uh, you know, unlikely heroes and stuff like that. And I think season two was a little bit more of like the underdog and, you know, being a... You know, it's it's the entire Crystal Council was just like, well, we don't really we we expect you to die, essentially, <laughs> and then like everybody kind of um, didn't uh, didn't expect anything from this party. As a uh, since I only li- I was listening to most of the season, it was really cool just to see the way in which it was like 
complicated and there was a lot of history of stuff and bigger organizations doing things. It wasn't very clear exactly what the direction that you guys were going in was. And it was very much um, exploratory and not very much like the victor, like the righteous path toward the inevitable greatness. It was very much like, well, we're going to just do the next thing that we think we should do. And I think it felt like no, there wasn't any particular like drive in. Like, we have to do this because we know they're the bad guy and yeah. we have to get these things. It was very much like, a lot Organic. of uh, yeah, there was a lot of history and um, if season lore that two was, was a relationship out. status, it would be it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, hopefully in a good way. Yeah, yeah definitely. but also like you know, like you said, like even with Bartleby, like you have characters that may be good and well intentioned, but do the wrong right or the wrong thing, and then you have characters like you know Jerick and Sarsa who like don't really fancy themselves necessarily heroes, but like wind up getting put in these positions and. The, did did the morally right thing, yeah. Even yeah. if they didn't want to do like the right thing, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then we should shout out, you know, to to Mark for Chaser. Was oh yeah. Great. That whole and and yeah, being part of that first Curio discovery mm. uh, was great, and he did a ton of damage too. <laughs> like he was he would just wrecked go John Ram's head in that battle and like all of the bugbears and the goblins and everything. Yeah. Swashbucklers. I also, guest really, stars. Liked, I also really liked Mark's voice for Chaser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was good. He, he literally voice. based that character off of a cat that he had uh, named <laughs> Louie. And, the and that's cat how we was, talked. The cat was missing several teeth. So he was like, if I'm this cat, like I would have to talk like this because I'd be missing these teeth. And that's with an underbite. No. Yeah. Oh, my husband looks like a, like a bulldog. He's yeah. got like. He's kind of talking like this. Like a cute, sexy bulldog. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Our Send us season. pictures. Our Mark Crespo is a cute, sexy, sexy bulldog. bulldog. <laughs> That's his next character. Is there a dog race? Ooh, there should yeah. be a dog race. And I, I've always had a Cabal's. thing for MacGuffin chases. What? No. <laughs> no. I've always had a thing for Mark Chris. Are we? For Mark. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah. I got to admit it too. Yeah. Oh, everybody, Sorry. the secret crush is good. Uh, no, I've always had a thing for MacGuffin chases. You know, like the, the whole go after this and go and find these things. And and even though it's very cliche, but I love cliches. So I was just like, well, I'm gonna throw this out there, and I like the idea of these ridiculous things. And yes, it was. It was going to be a bop it. Like, like <laughs> that, was, that was the idea all along, um, oh. is to have it be like, oh, it's pieces of a bop it, and you put it together, and it's. I, I remembered oh my, my actual God. favorite NPC. It was the moose. Oh, oh the Charlie! Oh yeah, moose. tell me a story. <laughs> yeah, who you named Charlie? Yeah, he had to have a name. Oh, Poor guy. I hope I hope Salius goes back and visits him at some point. I think, sure I think there was a lot of smoke and mirrors happening this season oh, with, yeah. I mean, just nobody was who you quite thought they were. The doppelgangers weren't bad. Like yes. they were just defending yeah. their own thing. And then like the moose was like this, I don't know, weird, ancient creature. Well, he was created by Gastoric. Oh, was he? Yeah. Gelatinous oh. moose and a, and a moose. Spoilers. Or gelatinous cube and a moose. Oh, He was gotcha. one of the early ones. And he mentioned like, I've been here for a long time, but Gastoric was down there. Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. So, yeah, he was one of the first ones and found his way there. The Doppelganger episode was rad to listen to. Oh, my God. It was really good. We were super worried about it. We were like, this no, is so confusing. So confusing. <laughs> it, it 100% read, and it was great. It was so fun to listen to. It was so bizarre. Because I had no bizarre. idea what I was like. But because you guys were playing it. It seemed like you guys were reading off a script. It was great. <laughs> it was we great. were not. It was so bizarre, like, rolling and playing against yourself, mm-hmm. as yourself. Like, that for me was one of those moments of, like, oh, I'm going to screw over my character here, but I got it. This is what my other, this yeah. other character well, I would loved, do. So. I, I convinced Coach to go eat me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we, can we yeah. talk about how much time we spent in Coach's Stomach. Stomach. Uh, Again, that, was like, of, that was the theme of the season was coach's stomach the if you'd pie, like to send me fan lizard. art <laughs> well coach spent a lot of time as a as a uh, what was it a, a li- subterranean, subterranean a giant subterranean lizard yeah the giant yes. subterranean lizard was i think your favorite form but i liked it uh, when you Kalika. turned into a, a poodle oh yeah <laughs> and, and, and when at night when everybody was asleep and you're like yeah you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
just <laughs> and just went randomly walking around as a bear. Oh yeah, just walk, yeah. Oh, I'm a bear. I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, yeah, that, it definitely felt like there was another like dimension to coach. Like you were figuring out the next level of him, and he's heroic but also vain. And well, I I, I think that he. From the first season, you know, I, I like characters that grow, and mm-hmm. I think Maya really rubbed off on him a lot. Like, I, I think that because of Maya, he saw that it was okay to be, to to let the thoughts that came in his head and he stifled, to just let those go. Like, to, to, to let those come out. And you're, like, starting to get to know yes. the inner monologue of Coach because inner of Coach. Maya. Nice. Which is really fun. Do you that think, makes me so happy. Do you think dying uh, and being brought back is going to change Coach in the future? Oh, coach is never coming back to the the, uh, the podcast. So <laughs> that's it. He he's, his mission's done. Well, he did he did get a lot of he found his. That's dwarves. it. Like, oh, uh, I hate to done. tell you this, Weston, oh. but coach is a knight of the realm. He very well might have to come back. I'm, I'm going to take him over and kill him the next. <laughs> I know, don't really worry. <laughs> that's the only way my characters die. Is that <laughs> the DM just murder them in front of their friends. I'll, I'll play him. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm a coach and I'm uh, I'm doing a thing. Guys, I haven't listened to the episode. <laughs> you were there. You st- no, that's, it wasn't. That's your fault. You knew we were doing a wrap up today, and you didn't listen. No, it hasn't come. It out hasn't yet. come out yet. <laughs> he oh. hasn't had a chance to listen. How to would it I yet. listen to it? <laughs> Stop okay. it, Edward. Everybody listening. Everybody oh. listening to this has already heard it, so nobody cares. You're the only one. You're literally the only one but here who's don't, behind. You don't know in what terms. <laughs> what? How, how? No. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hermione made him do it. <laughs> he, he literally came I knew to that. an episode about spoilers. <laughs> I was also right but I at wasn't the last there. You all chapter knew I wasn't of Harry there. Potter. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I wasn't there. Do, do you need to take a moment? No. I kind of do. This is big And news. I was watching The Sixth Sense at home, and I paused it right at the end <laughs> to get here to what? record this. <laughs> Coach was dead the whole time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we so don't, we don't people. know. We don't know what's gonna happen. It's a cookbook. Anyway, I, no, I am the only one who doesn't know. And you all know what happens. I don't know. I don't and know. we're back. <laughs> Can you stop yelling? No, I can't. <laughs> Daddy, I'm very upset. Jeff is a good four feet away from the microphone and still louder than everybody else right now. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. Uh, this is a any, lot to any, take in. Any unanswered uh, so, so spoilers, so, so Jeff? So what? <laughs> Are there any like unanswered to... questions that uh, from the season that you guys were curious about I that I a... may or may not be able to talk about? I have a question that's not necessarily about the season, but about you in, in it. So uh, in boxes the... or briefs? Yeah, mm. no. Uh, so in the original recording of the the Sexy fight season. where where Coach... the Gus Thorak fight. yeah the Gus Thorak the fight. second half uh, Silius Dur- at like. During that recording, he took the hand. He took Gus Thorak's hand. Much easier, by the way, than he managed to pull it off in the second attempt of that. Uh, um, and had you always intended for that hand to be able to go to replace Weston's hand? Nope. Okay. So did you have to kind of scramble afterwards? Nope. Okay. Because I, I mean, like, I'm like, as I'm like, I'm getting it. that hand and I'm doing this in the next time. I have a question. Yeah. So, like, we've we've talked multiple times about how, like, as a DM, you know, a lot of times things don't necessarily go the way that you may have planned or planned for. What was, did you have a moment in this season that was, like, the biggest kind of upset for, like, oh, well, this did not go the direction, and, like, you know, did you have anything where you really had to scramble and recalibrate, or? Uh, it may have been the the battle of the palace um when oh, yeah. when everybody that episode when everybody was like um when jarek was mind controlled mm. which luckily for me that succeeded because <laughs> he rolled really <laughs> low but then there was this whole thing where there, there was going to be a big uh, you know hybrid creature that landed in the courtyard and i, I had this whole thing ready and um of you know it didn't have to happen but i was just like oh here's gonna be a big fight and you guys are already like it's at the end of the day and then and i was like okay but but then also um you know we have to figure out what's going on down there so uh, you guys were like well let's go down there and i was like okay so we went down there and then that happened and the the coal satori's were revealed um as like oh there's this big army oh no and and then so i think just the escalation of that was really interesting 
of the, you know, it started uh, up top and it went down. And then I realized that we, we have to reveal that sooner. And I scrapped a couple of other like things that were going to happen along the way, just in the moment, like we got to, you know, get this, get this moving. That was a kind of a pacing challenge, I think, because, yeah. because one, that was a really long session, but, but I knew like from a pacing thing, like if you guys were just hanging around the city, it wouldn't make sense. Like after, after that discovery and after Kishara found out like, okay, well, we're going to kill you all and you're going to be part of my snake army. Uh, so I was like, well, the, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was, it was like, okay, we're going to have to figure things out. And uh, I think the next episode, I had a little chance to think about the, well, they're either going to try to fight her or in the temple with all these other people and all the robots, or she's going to throw out a negotiation, which is what she did. And that was kind of an interesting twist too, I think is, is like, Hey, you are going to work for me now, the villain, <laughs> you know, and do this mess, do this mission, or I'm going to kill your friends. Um, so that, that was, that was a little bit, I think that was my most challenging moment of like how to make that, uh, narratively work mm -hmm. and and what was the hybrid creature that would have shown up uh you might want to use it later i so might i might don't... like the sorex dead he doesn't he's not making it yeah but, well, but there's, there, we there, got... there are still hybrid the balance creatures. is restored scorpion chihuahuas no <laughs> 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 it was kind of a nasty one so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna oh, spoil fine. it speaking mm. to plants in that moment was a huge <laughs> oh, yes. that was super fun which I asked you, like, did you mean to <laughs> say? I don't think, like, Chris said offhanded, and you crash into some, like, columns and statues and potted plants. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think he even real, no. realized that he said the word plants. And I was like, plants? <laughs> and it was plants? also completely random that I had that boon from the yeah, Chewingas so the, the, earlier. I found these, I looked up cave, uh, you know, people you could run into in the cave for the gelatinous moose cave. And one of them, I was like, well, what if while they're fighting these wolf spiders, there's also some good uh, little elemental creatures. I was like, that's really cute. And and I was like, that's fun for them to just be there. Um, and they're called Chawingas and they, they grant these little um, charms. And I just made 20 charms and rolled a D 20. And, and as everybody got, everybody got booped on the nose, they got. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> I can't that was so it. funny. <laughs> this little guy goes. Boop. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, and everybody got randomly, like, Coach got to fly, and Ramara got to lie <laughs> better than she already did, and then uh, Jared got to speak with plants. Um, yes. I got an extra melee attack. You got an extra but attack. for me, that was like, I'm such garbage yeah. <laughs> melee attack. Right. So is still waiting to breathe underwater. Yeah. That I remembered about the entire time. I forgot about the chime of opening, though, of course, yeah. when I could have used it. Once yeah, thanks twice. for that. Yeah, <laughs> coach got destroyed. Oh, that might have been another thing. Is is the whole like let's ram the tower? Uh, yes. We were trying so hard. I wanted. And that you were to so not so wanting bad. to let us do that. And I was like, <laughs> "All right, go investigate the ship." Oh, I wanted to do Shit that so work. bad. <laughs> um, I got over there and definitely had a moment of like, "He's not gonna let me ram the tower." <laughs> Oh, I'll just fly. Cool. I, I just got very practical. I was like, do you know how to fly a ship? Can you do it by yourself? I you only need it. to crash it. <laughs> yeah, roll for that. Now roll for this other thing. Oh, you succeeded on that? Roll again. Um, I did have a whole like uh, aerial combat thing like while you guys were in the flying uh, ship ready to go as well. And the eagle. And the, well, the oh, eagle oh, was, no, that was spontaneous, mm -hmm. but the eagle was with Bartleby because that's part of his class as an artificer. He gets to make a construct. And so, like a flying battle for when we were when, going so when towards were, the Bard College, or later when we were going towards Kishar. It was, at the it was either going to be um, going towards the Hish Temple, mm. um, like f first getting the airship, or possibly even depending on the timing of things, on the way back um, from that. So, but yeah, just. It was. It didn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe there'll be an airship battle later. I think something I super appreciated was overall. Just it's a super re-listenable season because there's just so much that Chris was setting up. You could kind of tell early on that like this definitely means something. This is going to well, be important. The statue earrings. and the creatures well, a lot and of the. Earrings. Well, like, I had no idea what anything meant. It wasn't anything I could track then, but, like, you know this is going to be important. I and if you thinking, go back and listen to those episodes, like, 
you know, you definitely see the layers. Of the dragonborn and like the mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that Politics. whole conflict. Yeah, what's like, up with those dragonborn? I kept like, like I was like, this nice? is gonna come back. This is gonna come. It's in my notes. Like I was like, all right, dragonborn. I was like, maybe we're gonna make friends with them or something. Like I, or they're gonna attack. Yep. Who knows? Season but. seven. Well, I wanted to have a real world political scenario without getting into politics, but to make it feel like. Hey, this problem that you guys had with Emberbrook, like that's really bad. That's a tragedy. But we have our own problems, like this other things to deal with. There's there's other things. There's problems with the city. There's these hybrid creatures. So there's several things that they were dealing with, and they had to go deal with this dragonborn army that was threatening to kill. Now it kind of tied in with Bartleby, um, Bartleby's motivation. That's kind of where the dragonborn army came. And I like the idea of like there is this other realm of just all you know, wyverns and dragonborn and wormlings and stuff like Let's that. Let's go to there. And mm-hmm. that that's a bad place. So, I mean, and it, it wasn't ever, that's kind of one of those loose threads that, you know, apparently, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm, uh, intrigue. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of, but it, but they, uh, Kishara does mention that she was making the Colsatori army essentially as a form of revenue and, and she was going to sell them off and use the dragonborn to help invade other um, other realms, starting with Valkara, which is the realm to the north, which is where Jarek's father was from and where Gravely's from, actually. Mm. Dope. I also thought Cobbles was going to come back. When all the like desert zombies were turning up, I actually thought about asking, like, is Cobbles out there? But then I was like, oh, no, Cobbles is not going to be out here because he's going to come and rescue us at the end. <laughs> and then, no, I guess he died. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I really lost him. I thought about it, but I just, I <laughs> oh, I'm gonna that delete him hurt. off my. Uh, I'm gonna delete him off my app now. No, <laughs> no, no, Weston, don't. Yep. don't. Delete. Are you sure? It's D and D. Delete. Are you really sure? Yep. It's D and D. It's like a soap opera. Nobody's really dead. There he is. I have a phoenix. No, down. That's fine. please. Everyone, everyone, no. say goodbye. No, seriously, don't. Don't do it, Weston. Don't. don't Later, do cobbles. It. I never liked everyone him. Say goodbye. No, are you serious? Jen is actually West crying. Is so mad. I'm not crying, but like, don't. It's gone. He. It's all right. I, I, I got gone. him. I got him. We have stats. <laughs> I still have him. I'm um, really upset about this, you guys. You're upset um, that you learned he's deleting his character. I just learned that his character died. <laughs> his character died in the first episode. episode. <laughs> or the second episode. No, the co- that coach dies. Mm. Well, Wait, you already were there that. from that. You gotta listen to that. Ramara brought him back to life. You were there. What? He puts his hand the in the hand? thing, and he's like, zap. That was in the Gastoric. Yeah, that was in the Gastoric episode. He doesn't know that, you guys. Leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's, he's having yeah, a deep emotional the, moment that the, he doesn't and understand. And also he dies in the finale. But you were... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He doesn't die in the finale. Or he might he? die in the finale. Salias, oh, like, Salias okay. does. Twice. See if Weston deleted Coach from his app. Yeah, give me that app. <laughs> uh, I gotta know. Well, we'll kind of be wrapping this <laughs> okay, up. I misunderstood everything. Um, sure. Well, we I want to say actually on the on the all my stuff. I really appreciated not just the like everything that was laid into the first couple episodes, but the arc of the first four episodes. I really liked that the first episode really felt like just get to know the characters. You allowed space to for them to like play and talk and connect, and for us to like joke around. And then it wasn't. I think. Opening up with the like town is being invaded, battle run fight would have been just kind of like there's nothing to grab onto. But because there was some characters and connections first, you could do that and you yeah. could do a lot of there was a lot of setup and a meeting of characters in the third one too. And those are both hugely po- important episodes for the whole arc of things. And then moving into we talked about Godron earlier and just like I definitely felt like that was a moment where. You really found your footing, I think, in terms of like, well, we're out there, we're adventuring, we'll see how this goes. And it really reminds me of season one, episode three of season one, which is starts with David Claus and yeah, yeah. the sprites. And that's also an episode where like we really like came together with like, well, this is fun. We're having fun. We're really hitting our strengths and and uh, you know, each part of those one, two, three, four, and also all of the rest of those episodes was really impressive to observe. Yeah, the I, I wasn't sure if you guys were gonna go on the Curio quest or not. So I mean, it could have gone to the Dragonborn. Or uh, is there an have... alternative history of this season where we didn't meet Godron <laughs> Ramshead, where that just lives in your head? No, Godron, I would have. I would have made that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for a second you guys were gonna go back to Emberbrook, and and I had a, some other, you know, nasty stuff 
for you in Emberbrook, but but that didn't happen. So yeah, I was like, oh, I hope they go to the temple because that kind of kicks off the whole um, the, the, the mace the, of switching, the, the curios, yeah. the mace of switching, and um, all are that we going to talk so. about the mace of switching? <laughs> sure, the mace of switching, the the spiralite, and the uh, the bigger bracelet. <laughs> are we going to talk about the meta game behind the? Uh, the changes we made. Sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, because this is the first time I made legendary items, so when when you do that, um, it's definitely good to have uh, an open discussion about that. So I I gave the information to Weston, and then you know he kind of promptly said like, "Hey, this is super powerful," <laughs> and, and so just being able to balance it, like what does what seems fair at this level, and what what because I knew that I knew, and what I didn't tell you is like when all three of these were combined. It, it was a, you know, super Megazord. legendary. Voltron. Yeah, it was, it was basically you guys was became Voltron. No, it was became a Megazord. <laughs> Children. Yeah. Generational battle. <laughs> that was that was an idea that I didn't know if it was going to happen or not because Jen was at one point was like, "Well, we could destroy it." And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> "Oh well, yeah!" The, 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 you specifically went out of your way to say like, "And they could be destroyed by necrotic damage." I did. You <laughs> I did. did. Well, and frankly, like truthfully, if we had destroyed it, like she wouldn't have been able to do her thing. That's Neither true. would we, though. Yeah, That's but true. like, but we would like it would have ended that. Well, it wasn't we never a know. Idea. But yeah, so what? Uh, so, so originally, the Mace of Switching basically gave me level twenty Druid powers. <laughs> like I, I could transform into whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, however many times a day I wanted to do it. Cool. And and I was an like anamorph, Tyrannosaurus all the and, time. And, okay. and 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 that's because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> well, well, and 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 I'm I'm a big believer in you know upsides and downsides and, and limits and yeah you know, I I run my own campaigns and that's like that's really important to me that I don't I don't want to be you know the the six year old who can just think of anything and it happens you know like I put up a shield you know like like whatever. So um, when I read that I was like oh wow this is like, I I wanted it to feel um, earned. You know, mm-hmm. I I wanted the the abilities that Coach had with the mace to feel like, okay, I'm gonna use it now, but then I won't be able to use it later. Yeah. Um. So Chris and I kind of discussed things and figured out what would be a good balance that would still be super powerful, which yeah. is what it was. And the charges helped. I think rolling for yeah. how many charges you got each day. <laughs> was good and like not being able to go beyond a certain level and like CR. the size of the creature I you'd use more charges for that right it was pretty interesting um I, I definitely wanted to feel like these heroes were finding stuff that were above their pay grade like oh we're, this is not what we expected and that that's what motivationally changed kishara's whole thing from i'm gonna make all these constructs to now i need these i need these things i need you to find them for me um under the ruse of like find them for yourselves but also find them for me because like she she knew if she found these things that she would be able to contact dendar the night serpent her god and bring back um the yuan race and all that stuff so that was kind of her big motivation y'all got to see dendar the night serpent Jeff doesn't know what that means (laughs) what (laughs) that's the thing that kills i'm learning so much (laughs) <laughs> I'm not ready for this finale. Or just like I have a question. Game. So in the Gus Thorak battle, at the very beginning of the Gus Thorak battle, Jarek takes the spiralite <laughs> and Coach says, throw it to me, trust me, yeah. and then holds his action. Yeah, I did. And then yep. literally for the next, <laughs> all through that episode Eight and most round. of the and next he episode, <laughs> he is just standing there with his arm up. <laughs> Waiting for a spiralite that will never come. So the question is, like, what was he going to do if the spiralite ever arrived? I know what he's going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I was going to use the mace, yeah. transform into some kind of, like, whale or some kind of something, jump into the water, and I was gone. Oh. Like, I, w- I would have been wow. out of there. Yeah. Be- because I, I, I figured that the Gus Thorak battle was one that we couldn't win. Oh. Because of all, like, like I, I, I figured... Based on all the history and all the lore, Coach was like, we we can't beat this guy. So we have to get in and get out. Um, so that's what he was his plan was. But I was just frozen mm-hmm. for so eight close. rounds. So <laughs> I just stood there. One for ray a while. of slowness away I, I, I from I, success. And one and one gorilla pod away from dropping you <laughs> just just, in the water. Coach was super gone, yeah. Yeah, Jarek's plan in like just grabbing the spiralite and running was similar in like this is the thing we need. 
let's just grab it and go mm-hmm. or see if like i think from jarek's point of view he was thinking i'm gonna get this i'm going to give it to sarsa or give it to coach and then i'm gonna hold the line at this bridge while they mm-hmm. get out of here i didn't go expect in the you water to or run whatever. up and, and grab it from mm-hmm. him either that that was not i was like oh okay <laughs> yeah i was ready for us to just dive into that water and i was gonna cast water walk and just have us saunter on out <laughs> Or water breathing. I could have done my water breathing. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but it was it was fun to see that battle take place, and y'all got to wreck some some Duragar, <laughs> and uh, and Massimo got to have some heroic moments, and maybe and Ramara got to destroy Ramara mostly yes. everything. Ramara, it was mostly Ramara. <laughs> Terrifying. So, kind of wrapping up our thoughts for this season. Um, one one question that was raised towards the end is um, Kishara brings up. Um, the Platinum Syndicate, and what do you guys think? Platinum uh, Syndicate. What do you guys think of the Platinum Syndicate? Platinum Syndicate. Platinum who Syndicate. that is? I don't know, but I bet you it's bad. <laughs> Maybe they're like an R and B group yeah. that like creates <laughs> <laughs> another timeless hit, another records hit record and... by the Platinum. <laughs> 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 it's like a gold syndicate, but they've sold fifty thousand more albums. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Sorry, fair. I'm the worst. That's fair. That came out in an amazing way that was, I think, unintentional for all of us because, like, you referenced enough to kind of, like, give a sense of, like, oh, there's a bigger plan because you mentioned Lord Metre from the first season. But just, I think, by random chance, it was Jarek and Sarsa who had snuck ahead because they're stealthier mm-hmm. who overheard that. And they're the two characters who Lord Metre means nothing. Nothing, to. nothing to. And then I genuinely was like, Jarek has this information and he would, like, ask people about it because it sounded important and i genuinely it did not cross my mind until coach was walking away <laughs> at which point <laughs> legitimately jarek and me together were like oh hey you know what I, I, we overheard this thing about this like platinum syndicate and this lord metre guy and salias kind of knows a little bit but little didn't bit, actually yeah. no, he wasn't, wasn't like involved in those discussions yeah, and nope. so like which is great that's yeah. just out there, and nobody, <laughs> none of the actual characters really have any idea that that means anything. Yeah. yeah. Except yeah, for you at home. Did Did Coach ever even find out about the, he didn't even no. find out about the Platinum Second Ticket no. at all. <laughs> no, no clue. He's just, he's just going to go home, to... crack open a beer, he's, and learn how got, to make a meat pie. That's he's exactly right. 300 dwarves <laughs> following him. So many dwarves. You could franchise and a, and a the meat hand. pies. And, Ooh. and some orcs. And by the way, uh, I, be in the cafeteria during is. the editing of Gus Thorak, so I did say that Coach's left hand oh, yeah. got cut off, and, it, and Gus Thorak's uh, hand was not his left hand. It was his right hand. So, so technically, Coach has two right hands <laughs> but but what i kind of what i kind of turned it into was because it was a metal hand it has this kind of like cool like reverse you know kind of ability where you know it can ro- rotate around it's or, double and, jointed you know it, yeah. yeah it can kind of like reverse and stuff but that's i figured like like a glove when we see coach yeah. again if we ever see coach again uh that there's some other things to that hand Interesting. That, okay. There's some if things. If we ever see Coach again, but you, you won't, won't because he's dead. <laughs> we also definitely have the impression that there's things to Chaser's hand that never yeah. got used. Yeah, I was yeah. waiting to find out about that. <laughs> hand twins. Of, I won't spoil. I won't on. spoil. You know what Mark and I worked out about his, uh, what about his his hand? Um, well, thank you guys uh, for a fantastic season. I definitely learned a lot. Closing thoughts on season two. Our sexiest season yet. Yes. 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 It was. I mean, like, Cole just kind of ghosted Sarsa. Oh, yeah, Sarsa. So. Cole, Cole got... Well, I think during that little downtime, like mm-hmm. during recovery time, there was definitely like a, a text. Oh. You, know? <laughs> you up. Yeah. There was, there was a message. You know, he has the message ability, so he would yeah. like, you want to you wanna meet later? Yeah. <laughs> you want to have gotta, a drink in that, that, that terribly uh, trendy bar? Gotta check that box. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. Thank you guys for listening to season two. And uh, we'll, we'll good job, Chris. Yeah. Back season three. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chris. Three cheers for the DM. Hip hip. Huzzah. Hurrah. Hip hip. Huzzah. Hip hip. Huzzah. 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 Huzzah.